Hey there guys, welcome back to another episode of Headphone Zeal Reviews, and in this case it's going to be the 2002 film Resident Evil, the first film in the Resident Evil franchise. So I am finally getting, or I don't want to say finally, but I did watch it originally when it came out in the theaters back in 2002. Um, I don't want to say I watched it since then, at the time it wasn't really my kind of movie, it felt okay. Um, and But that was also going into it, not having played any of the games, and not really understanding what any of the games were about. Um, I still haven't seen, or I still haven't played any of the games, so I can't really speak to that. But I can say that I did read up on it a little bit, and I found that the game st stays true to what the game, or the movie stays true to a lot of what the movies were about as far as the themes um, with the zombies, uh, human experimentation, Raccoon City, and all of that. So overall, the movie generally worked as far as a good video game to movie translation. And uh, reading online, I found that that was actually the case that the first one at least was the, probably the closest one to the video game as far as what they tried to do. The rest of them kind of merged away from the games, but that is something to be expected. Um, but beyond that, they kept some of the themes going and they did bring in, um, some of the monsters over time. So while we didn't get all of the uh, villains from the games in the movies, they did bring in more and more characters over time. So. Um, based on what they could do, they kind of made it a reason to see each of the next or each of the following films so that um, there was a reason to see them. So, um, based on what I saw in this movie, it actually made me more interested to watch the rest of the films to see how they hold up, if they're interesting, um, if they kept some of the visuals going, and how well they did with the rest of them. Um, based on the trailers, it does look like they did pretty well, and compared to Doom, I want to say that this is a better movie based on one key element, and that is the lighting in the film. In Resident Evil, it does what Doom should have done and what would have made Doom a vastly um, superior film than what we saw, because in Resident Evil, with the lighting that they did, it wasn't necessarily that they had better lighting, they used clever lighting. So when you have the characters um, t running down dark hallways from one section to the next, you do have dark elements. You do have a few scenes here and there where the, ca the characters are talking in the dark. But um, for the vast majority of the film, when the characters are talking in the dark and as they're moving through or as we're progressing through the film, the characters don't talk in dark areas, they talk in convenient areas. So um, they're talking in front of computer monitors, they're talking in front of flashing lights, and they're arguing in front of uh, an exposed um, electrical cord with sparks flying. So things like that allow you to see the characters and kind of get an gauge that of where they are in the facility. Not necessarily their exact location, because as far as we know, they're in one room that's cha with a changing set. but overall you are able to see them and you're able to see that they're in a facility and they're in a, the office building that was originally shut down at the beginning of the film so for the most part the movie works because the lighting is very well done and is very well used for a horror film so for me if doom had done a similar thing it would have been a much better movie because with Resident Evil, you're able to see that they're moving around a facility, they're moving from hallway to hallway, corridor to corridor, room to room, and they're making progress. And that in facilities or in rooms that are not affected by the surges or have emergency lighting, for example, and things like that, you're able to um, see that they're in a facility and they're in a warehouse or in a different room than the last versus a situation like Doom where you know that they're in different rooms but you wonder how they got there and uh, what it took for them to get there even though you know that they somehow had to get there but not being able to see things like that makes it for a more difficult movie to watch. So overall if I was to rate Resident Evil now I would probably give it about a B, B grade. Um, generally it's not necessary. I mean not having played any of the video games, I can't. It's hard to give it a higher grade. Um, so the one thing that stood out from the video games that I knew of was the zombie dogs, which was a pretty cool scene. In watching it, um, the rest of it, it's hard to tell what was there, what wasn't there. Um, 
um, the name, a name, a case could be made for the name of the movie for Resident Evil, that the Resident Evil is the Umbrella Corporation and that they've taken over everything. So no matter where you turn, you're gonna see their influence. So kind of works, um, but not knowing that it's coming from a video game or not, not knowing that it's a video game to movie translation doesn't necessarily hurt it so overall so what they do with the voiceover at the beginning of the film makes the film generally just work um and you kind of get by the, or by the end of the film you see that they're setting up for a um sequel or a franchise of films and it's actually a pretty cool effect at the end of the game or end of the film because it feels like it was at the end of a game where um Alice is setting up to take on the world and she's going to try and explore the world so you, know, you can expect more to come. So that's probably the only real downside as well, or not really a negative, but it gives you an incentive to want to watch the sequel at least to find out what happens next or where she goes from the events in this film. So I gave it a solid grade of a B. It was enjoyable. It wasn't... Um, you could, for me, I enjoyed it mostly just because of the lighting, the... Um, events that took place were good enough. Um, there's no real reason for, for not giving it an A, but it's one of those things that because it relies on knowing what, or having probably played the video games a little bit to know the, to have more of an impact, um, that's kind of why I gave it a little bit of a lower grade. If I had played the video games, then I probably can adjust the rating up or down depending on um, how well they did, but from the looks of it, they did a pretty good job. The things that I new of the video game were there so like umbrella corporation raccoon city the zombie dogs i don't know that alice is ever in the video games but um the look the logos of umbrella corporation i think raccoon corporation i'm not sure which is which but those show up so overall the themes of it seemed like they were there so it made for me a for made for an enjoyable movie for me to watch so that's all there is for the for me so if the rest of the movies come up for streaming i didn't actually go, go back and check to see if they're streaming or not um i might actually go to in and finish the franchise but of all the video game to movie translations at least you can see why this was able to get as many sequels as it did even if it was just one that would have been good enough but you can see why they're continuing to make the number of sequels that they they did because they made it interesting enough of a film and tr true enough to the video games where people where the movies could be good and I'm, i mean i'm assuming without having watched the rest that the rest are just as good or there's enough of a tie-in that makes it worth watching the rest of the movies and um makes them enjoyable enough to watch so i didn't check the movie ratings on this movie i think it did okay it was about the same as do maybe a little bit less but or, or sorry maybe a little bit more but for the time and the reputation that video game to movie translations had this actually now feels a lot better than definitely doom um of course better than the obvious ones like double dragon and super mario brothers um i think i saw a couple other ones recently as well but this one felt generally very well done so if I was so I def I would definitely recommend watching it even if it was a C grade where the acting was cheesy or they stayed more to the um, conversations like video games were at the time or even like in the 90s where they were really cheesy then um, it would have it would probably still be recommendable just because the visuals of it and the act and were good enough and what they accomplished were good so that's all there is for this review so um, if you want to get in touch with me, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website's PatelN01.com. Past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. So, of course, the next horror movie review is going to be Silent Hill from, I believe, 2006. Um, in the meantime, or coming up otherwise as far as the reviews, um, I'm going to do a single review possibly this week. Um, if not this week, then next week for Fear the Walking Dead Season 6, Episode 1, and The Walking Dead, um, new, uh, The World Beyond, or Worlds Beyond, whatever the new show is, um, the first two episodes. So those three episodes for this week, if I get it, get them watched. Otherwise, next week with the first two episodes for Fear the Walking Dead, and three episodes for 
uh, The Walking Dead World Beyond, but look out for those reviews as well. Um, now that's The Walking Dead Season 10 is done, we're, that's probably going to be quiet for a little while unless they somehow release the six um, bonus episodes or six episodes that they cut short um, before Season 11. So um, th there's always hope for that. But that's all there is for this particular review. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.